Good evening and welcome to MSR TV6 News for Tuesday the 25th of October 2011. In the headlines, suspected killer committed suicide at the Point Blanche prison and the Youth Development Center holds seminar tomorrow. Stay tuned for these stories and more after the break. Welcome back. The lifeless body of Reed, the man suspected to have murdered his 13-year-old daughter Tiffany Reed on the evening of September 6, 2011, was found hanging in his cell at the Point Blanch prison this morning. Police Inspector Ricardo Henson has more. Um, there are so many investigations that we are, we are busy with, but um, like you are asking about Mr. Reed, um, it was on, on uh, this morning, which is a Tuesday morning. Um, October 25th between, I think it was minutes to five, that our central police dispatch received a call from uh, the prison in Point Blanche that um, uh, the prisoner or the, the, the suspect in the case of, of the, the, the young girl that died, Mr. Robert Reed, um, had uh, committed suicide. Um, immediately, uh, several police patrols went to, to the scene and indeed they found him um, hanging from a string um, that was tied around his neck, um, hanging from that string, and he wasn't given any signs of life. At the time, um, and the place where it took place was um, in the uh, medical ward. Um, you, as you know, he had suffered some burns, and he was uh, being um, medically treated um, during the period of time. So um, the, sea, this, the, the, the area was cordoned off. It had become a, a scene, a crime scene, and um, the Forensic department, detective department um, are busy trying to piece together um, what it is exactly happened and, and why he apparently took his, his own life. So the investigation is on. Um, the medical doctor went to the scene and uh, has pronounced uh, the death of the victim. So um, that is under investigation at the present time. In more news, the founder and president of the Youth Development Center, Emily Kettel, spoke to MSR News on Tuesday, and she told us how the YDC all began. YDC actually came across as a, in my view, as somewhat a vision, or a vision in my mind, um, when I was doing a work assignment at a, a course that I did, and the assignment was a very simple question, what could I do to impact and to bring change to my community? And with that, um, with that question, that's where YDC came across, because I was saying, you know, we could have a youth center. The way that I could impact my community is to have a youth center where young people could come, those that fell out of school, those that could not finish what they started, to come to a center where they could get, they could get learn a skill, they could pick up something extra. And to also have cultural events, keeping our culture here in St. Martin. So that is where actually YDC came across. It came across during that um, work, school work assignment. She also gave us some of the plans the YDC has for the young people of St. Martin. Right now, our next phase, because we have recently, we just have about 12 months since we have been established, and um, everyone has their busy lives, but so far, all we did, we have worked on so far is events, um, different events, 
church religious events um, for young people. But hopefully for the new year, we want to get out, really get out there to the community, helping young people however we can, the less fortunate. We want to reach out to those also. We want to keep other um, activities and seminars also, like what we are planning now for parents, for teachers to get them up to standard and up. In other news, the president of the Voice of Our Children Foundation, Shamin Olibache, spoke to MSR News on Tuesday and shared with us some of the foundation's role and the plans for the island of St. Martin. The association is about um, the youth. We are trying to guide them in the right direction. We are trying to stimulate them uh, more into doing positive things instead of being on the road constantly. So the aim is to get them off the road, get them um, involved, we have um, two um, different um, programs on the one umbrella. We have our radio program, and we also have our news for kids program. That's a weekly, both of them are weekly programs. She further went on to explain why the foundation had a walkathon against violence. Well, as you know, this year, 2011 was amazing when it comes to the, the fight and the killing and the shooting and the whatever else we have because some, some, of, our, some of the youth um, died um, accidentally but all in all they are still no longer here with us. Um, we had too many this year and we thought um, it would be a good thing to give some of our kids um, a little relief because some of the youth that died um, are friends with so many of the ones that um, passed away. So they're also in their own mourning and their own grief and also for the family and friends. So the walk is more to say, you know, it, it, it's just to give you a little, a little um, time that you can come together with all the ones that lost um, um, their family member and try to motivate and try to stimulate each other. Stay tuned for regional news after the break. Welcome back. The St. Kitts Police Department has made the first arrest under the recent Gang Act of 2011. Joel Phillip of Shadwell Housing and Vermont Elliott of St. John's were arrested on Friday and charged for the offense of being a member of a gang and preventing a person from leaving the gang. Both will face between 10 to 25 years in prison if convicted. In more regional news, Dominica is getting set to host the 15th annual World Creole Music Festival. The festival will begin on Friday the 28th to the 30th of October at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium in Roseau. Some of the groups scheduled to perform are Gramax Fame, Legendary Voice of UB40, Kadas, Egyptian, Triple K, Midnight Groovers, and The Swinging Stars.
by means of information, please be informed that part of the Concordia Road will be closed from Wednesday the 26th of October 2011 from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. The movement of people and vehicles is prohibited at the intersection of Rue de Holland and the intersection of Rue de Charles Heights. For this purpose, the parking of all land motor vehicles is strictly prohibited on the above street mentioned. And now, for MSR Tips for Life. Tonight, we'll focus on five ways to show love to your children. Number one, spend time with your children. We spell love, L-O-V-E, but our children and teenagers spell love, T-I-M-E. Number two, discipline your children. Disciplining your children is not fun, but it is love. Number three, show your kids how the world works. Most of the successful people I have known have someone in their lives to teach them how the world works. Number four, love your spouse. The first place your kids will learn how to love one another is by watching you. And number five, watch your words. The words that we speak to our children can be encouraging or discouraging, a blessing or a curse. We have come to the end of MSR TV6 News for Tuesday the 25th of October 2011. Be sure to join us tomorrow for another package of our news. You can log on to our website at www.msrcabletv.com. I'm your anchor, Darius Murray. Have a pleasant evening.